Good evening, and welcome to Third Church, New York City. Let's begin by singing hymn number 141. I'll read the first verse. If the Lord build not the house, they that labor build in vain. Father, may our, cor may our cornerstone stand four square without a stain. Hymn number 141. I'll read from the Bible and correlative passages from the Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. This week's readings were inspired by the concept of being planted in our spiritual foundation. The citations this week are from the Holy Bible. The translation is the Common English Bible. Psalms. You laid the earth's foundation long ago. The skies are your handiwork. Let my whole being bless the Lord. Lord, my God, how fantastic you are. You are clothed in glory and grandeur. You wear light like a robe. You open the skies like a curtain. You established the earth on its foundations so that it will never fall. Deuteronomy. I proclaim the Lord's name. Give praise to our God. The rock, his acts, are perfection. No doubt about it, all his ways are right. He's the faithful God, never deceiving, altogether righteous and true is he. Psalms. You have saved my life from death, saved my feet from stumbling, so that I can walk before God in the light of life. Acts. Peter and John were going up to the temple 
at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the established prayer time. Meanwhile, a man crippled since birth was being carried in. Every day, people would place him at the temple gate known as the Beautiful Gate, so he could ask for money from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he began to ask them for a gift. Peter and John stared at him. Peter said, look at us. So the man gazed at them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I don't have any money, but I will give you what I do have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise up and walk. Then he grasped the man's right hand and raised him up. At once his feet and ankles became strong. Jumping up, he began to walk around. He entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. They recognized him as the same one who used to sit at the temple's beautiful gate, asking for money. They were filled with amazement and surprise at what had happened to him. Matthew. Large crowds came in, large crowds came to him, including those who were paralyzed, blind, injured, and unable to speak, and many others. And they laid them at his feet, and he healed them. John. Jesus knew the Father had given everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table and took off his robes. Picking up a linen towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. No, Peter said, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, Unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. Simon Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus responded, Those who have bathed need only to have their feet washed, because they are completely clean. You disciples are clean, but not every one of you. Psalms I put all my hope in the Lord. He leaned down to me. He listened to my cry for help. He lifted me out of the pit of death, out of the mud and filth, and set my feet on solid rock. He steadied my legs. Matthew. Everybody who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise builder who built a house on bedrock. The rain fell, the, f the floods came, and the wind blew and beat against the house. It didn't fall because it was firmly set on bedrock. But everybody who hears these words of mine and doesn't put them into practice will be like a fool who built a house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the wind blew and beat against the house. It fell and was completely destroyed. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he was teaching them like someone with authority and not like their legal experts. Psalms What are human beings that you think about them? What are human beings that you pay attention to them? You've made them only slightly less than divine, 
crowning them with glory and grandeur. You've let them rule over your handiwork, putting everything under their feet. Daniel. In the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's rule, he had many dreams. The dreams made him anxious, but he kept sleeping. The king summoned the dream interpreters, enchanters, diviners, and Chaldeans to explain his dreams to him. They came and stood before the king. Then the king said to them, I had a dream, and I'm anxious to know its meaning. The Chaldeans answered the king in Aramaic, Long live the king. Tell your servants the dream, and we will explain its meaning. The king answered the Chaldeans, My decision is final. If you can't tell me the dream and its meaning, you will be torn from limb to limb, and your houses will be turned into trash dumps. The Chaldeans answered the king, No one on earth can do what the king is asking. No king or ruler, no matter how great, has ever asked such a thing of any dream interpreter, enchanter, or Chaldean. Daniel went and asked the king to give him some time so he could explain the dream's meaning to him. Then Daniel went to his house and explained the situation to his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, so that they would ask the God of heaven for help about this mystery in hopes that Daniel and his friends wouldn't die with the rest of Babylon's sages. Then, in a vision by night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel. Daniel praised the God of heaven. God's name be praised from age to eternal age. Wisdom and might are his. God is the one who uncovers what lies deeply hidden. He knows what hides in darkness. Light lives with him. I acknowledge and praise you, my Father's God. You've given me wisdom and might. And now you've made known to me what we asked of you. You've made known to us the king's demand. So Daniel went to Arioch the man the king had appointed to wipe out battle Babylon's sages. Daniel said to him, Don't wipe out the sages of Babylon. Bring me before the king, and I will explain the dream's meaning to him. Wasting no time, Arioch brought Daniel before the king, telling him, I have found someone from the Judean exiles who will tell the, dream, who will tell the dream's meaning to the king. Your Majesty, you were looking, and there, rising before you, was a single massive statue. The statue was huge, shining with dazzling light, and was awesome to see. The statue's head was made of pure gold. Its chest and arms were made from silver. Its abdomen and hips were made of bronze. Its legs were of iron, and its feet were a mixture of iron and clay. You observed this until a stone was cut, but not by hands, and it smashed the statue's feet, the statue's feet of iron and clay and shattered them. Then all the parts shattered simultaneously, iron, clay, bronze, silver, and gold. They became like chaff left on summer threshing floors. The wind lifted them away until no trace of them remained. But the stone that smashed the statue became a mighty mountain, and it filled the entire earth. This was the dream. Now we will tell the king its meaning. You, your majesty, are the king of kings. The God of heaven has given king kingship, power, might, and glory to you. God has delivered into your care human beings, wild creatures, and birds in the sky, 
wherever they live, and has made you ruler of all of them. You are the gold head. But in your place, another kingdom will arise, one inferior to yours. Then a third bronze kingdom will rule over the earth. Then will come forth, then will come a fourth kingdom, mighty like iron. Just as iron shatters and crushes everything, so like an iron that smashes, it will shatter and crush all these others. As for the feet and toes that you saw, which were a mixture of potter's clay and iron, that signifies a divided kingdom, but it will possess some of the unyielding strength of iron. Even so, you saw the iron mixed with earthy clay. Just as you saw the iron mixed with earthy clay, they will join together by intermarrying, but they will not bond to each other just as iron does not fuse with clay. But in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will raise up an everlasting kingdom that will be indestructible. Its rule will never pass to another people. It will shatter other kingdoms. It will put an end to all of them. It will stand firm forever. The king declared to Daniel, no doubt about it, your God is God of gods, Lord of kings, and a revealer of mysteries, because you are able to reveal this mystery. Isaiah, therefore the Lord God says, look, I am laying in Zion a stone, a tested stone a valuable cornerstone, a sure foundation. The one who trusts won't tremble. First Corinthians. No one can lay any other foundation besides the one that is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Don't you know that you are God's temple? and God's Spirit lives in you? And from the Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Jesus established his church and maintained his mission on a spiritual foundation of Christ healing the supremacy of spirit was the foundation on which Jesus built. His sublime summary points to the religion of love. Knowing that soul and its attributes were forever manifested through man, the master healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, feet to the lame, thus bringing to light the scientific action of the divine mind on human minds and bodies and giving a better understanding of soul and salvation. The understanding, even in a degree, of the divine all-power destroys fear and plants the feet in the true path, the path which leads to the house built without hands eternal in the heavens. We must forsake the foundation of material systems, however time-honored, if we would gain the Christ as our only Savior. The testimony of the material senses is neither absolute nor divine. I therefore plant myself unreservedly on the teachings of Jesus, of his apostles, of the prophets, and on the testimony of the science of mind. Other foundations, there are none. All other systems, systems based wholly or partly on knowledge 
gained through the material senses, are reeds shaken by the wind, not houses built on the rock. Rock. Spiritual foundation. Truth. Physicians whom the sick employ in their helplessness should be models of virtue. They should be wise spiritual guides to health and hope. To the tremblers on the brink of death who understand not the divine truth which is life and perpetuates being, physicians should be able to teach it. Then when the soul is willing and the flesh is weak, the patient's feet may be planted on the rock, Christ Jesus, the true spiritual idea, the true idea of spiritual power. Christianity will never be based on a divine principle and so found to be unerring until its absolute science is reached. When this is accomplished, Neither pride, prejudice, bigotry, nor envy can wash away its foundations, for it is built upon the rock, Christ. When the divine precepts are understood, they unfold the foundations of fellowship, in which one mind is not at war with another, but all have one spirit, God one intelligent source, in accordance with the scriptural command, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Wisdom and love may require many sacrifices of self to save us from sin. The atonement requires constant self-immolation on the sinner's part, that God's wrath should be vented upon his beloved son is divinely unnatural. Such a theory is man-made. The atonement is a hard problem in theology, but its scientific explanation is that suffering is an error of sinful sense which truth destroys, and that eventually both sin and suffering will fall at the feet of everlasting love Truth casts out all evils and materialistic methods with the actual spiritual law, the law which gives sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, voice to the dumb, feet to the lame. Immortal mind is the only cause Therefore, disease is neither a cause nor an effect. Mind, in every case, is the eternal God, good. Sin, disease, and death have no foundations in truth. The foundation of mortal discord is a false sense of man's origin. To begin rightly is to end rightly. Every concept which seems to begin with the brain begins falsely. Divine mind is the only cause or principle of existence. Cause does not exist in matter, in mortal mind, or in physical forms. Laws of nature are laws of spirit, but mortals commonly recognize as law that which hides the power of spirit. Divine mind rightly demands man's entire obedience, affection, and strength. The best sermon ever preached is truth, practiced and demonstrated by the destruction of sin, sickness, and death. We cannot build safely on false foundations. Truth makes a new creature in whom old things pass away 
and all things are become new. Passions, selfishness, false appetites, hatred, fear, all sensuality, yield to spirituality, and the superabundance of being is on the side of God, good. The psalmist said, Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. The great truth in the science of being, that the real man was, is, and ever shall be perfect, is incontrovertible. For if man is the image, reflection of God, he is neither inverted nor subverted, but upright and godlike. Let's pray for the congregation first silently, then repeat together the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let's sing hymn number 123. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he hath said, to you who to God for your refuge have fled? Hymn number 123.
This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. We hold Sunday services at 11 a.m. and Wednesday testimony meetings at 7.30 p.m. We also have services in Spanish, Sundays at 1 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. All our services are held online and in person, and all are welcome. Third Church offers Sunday school classes online and in person for children and teens. These free one-hour classes are held each Sunday. At Sunday school, students learn how much God loves them and cares for them. They also learn about the Bible characters and lessons and the healing power of truth. For more information on times and classes, please send us an email, thirdchurch at thirdchurchnyc.com. Third Church maintains a reading room on the first floor of this building. That's the lower level of this building. The reading room provides a quiet place for prayer and study, and all are welcome. Here you may purchase books and recordings on Christian science. The Reading Room has the latest issues of the Christian Science Monitor, an award-winning international news weekly available to read or purchase. Reading Room hours are Monday through Friday from 1 to 4 p.m. Christian Science is practical and it heals. Our meeting is now open for all to share experiences of healing and spiritual insights that prove God's ever presence and power in their lives. If you're listening by telephone and would like to share a testimony, press star, then the number six. Our technician will unmute your line. Please speak directly into the microphone of your phone. Don't use the speaker phone. That way we can hear you a little better. If you're watching by Zoom, feel free to unmute yourself and speak. Part of your readings from the, the New Testament, <clears throat> uh, it, at one point you read that <clears throat> Jesus knew that God gave everything into his hands. And that reminded me of this week's lesson where Adam and Eve feel that whatever God gave them was too far away, inaccessible, not attractive enough, not relevant, um, and all the et ceteras, that includes the prodigal son uh, realized that he had everything the father gave him. And this is in accord with the first chapter of Genesis in the uh, symbolic spiritual creation, and not in accord with um, what Adam and Eve perceived in the Garden of Eden in that allegory. Um, the serpent led them to believe that God was not enough and that they could become as gods. And several of the citations in this week's lesson mention how uh, that is a misrepresentation of God, uh, that there's something in addition to God. And <clears throat> I don't know how many lessons on Adam and fallen man I've read in my life, um, uh, but each time I see something new, and today when I was working, I just saw the absolute relevance of uh, uh, Adam and Eve's deception, uh, which caused them to diverge from uh, good, absolute, eternal, infinite, totally reliable, principled good uh, that expresses itself in every avenue of being. And as the Bible ends in this week's Sentinel points out, the serpent never coerces. And of course, as Christian scientists, we know that, but it was helpful to be reminded of that. The serpent merely can suggest. But when we're facing the serpent and not facing God, uh, it seems to bring uh, um, 
the promise of satisfaction, happiness, health, excitement, pleasure, uh, whatever, whatever words we might want to put in into that. But Jesus knew that God gave everything into his hands and that everything was spiritually mental, was principled, was good, and was absolutely practical and could meet every need in this human life. And so it's always good to be reminded of that. Thank you for your readings. Thank you for, thank you for your readings. Um, I want to uh, sing praises of the uh, Christian Science Lesson Committee that put together the lesson for last week. I thought it was really a terrific treatment handling of all the challenges of what our eyes behold and see in the um, in the conflict uh, in the Ukraine and uh, between Ukraine and Russia. Um, it it uh, handled the point of trusting God that uh, it would seem that the just the unjust are strong and, and the just uh, are weak. But God is good, God is just, and justice will prevail. It, it, it would have us put our faith in the presence and power, um, the omnipresence and omnipotence of, of God, and, uh, and not to fear what the, what the eyes behold. It also handled revenge. There's a story of um, the, the people that rejected uh, Jesus when he was traveling towards uh, Jerusalem for the, uh, for the Passion, really. It was uh, for his crucifixion and uh, the resurrection. And he was, a, he was quite aware of this. and. Um, was determined to go, even knowing what was going to happen. And they said his face was as it would go to uh, Jerusalem. And the, uh, the Samaritans, or the, those who, uh, the, whose land he was traveling through, were not receiving him well. And the disciples said, should we call down fire on them as uh, Elijah called down fire uh, on the prophets of Baal? Um, and Jesus says, you know not what, what you're of. That's not the idea. And truth be told, uh, Elijah called down the fire on the sacrifice. Uh, yes, I guess he did kill the uh, prophets with the sword, but he did not put down fire. At any rate, the, um, the, the point was that uh, it, uh, Jesus came to heal. He didn't come to destroy. And in our thinking, our thinking should be in uh, line with that. We pray for that mind to be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. Our thoughts should be to heal and not to destroy. Uh, it, in just so many ways, it, it handled aspects of the thought uh, in, uh, in uh, surrounding that that uh, war. It's very interesting in the news this week, the, the leaked um, draft of an opinion of the uh, Supreme Court saying that they would overturn Roe v. Wade. The conversation I've been hearing, it's really remarkable that how, how these conflicts make us go back to school and remember how the Constitution was put together and uh, and what the the remedies are, one can uh, certainly take issue with the interpretation of the Constitution in that um, in that draft. But it was based on the Constitution, uh, an interpretation, and and the remedy is also in the Constitution, putting it back to states' rights if if the if the 
people haven't acted either by amending the Constitution or in their federal legislation, then it's left to the states to decide. It's, it's really quite remarkable to um, have people think, uh, thinking and talking about the Constitution. Um, and what a wonderful experiment in self-rule uh, it is. Mrs. Eddy talks about we are self-governed only when we are governed by God. And, and that is where we seek our government. And, as, and government was very much handled in the lesson last week also. Uh, that God is our king and lawgiver and, uh, and judge. We can be calm in knowing God's government in uh, its presence and power and having faith in that manifestation. Uh, the, I think the church had a wonderful meeting last evening in which uh, problems uh, were advanced, uh, almost uh, progress towards resolution. Great progress was made, and I mean, that was a wonderful uh, the thing to participate in. So I'm, I'm very grateful for the teachings of Christian science, how it prepares us to meet the challenges of the day, to analyze, to think, to be, a, to have a, have a, a higher or a, a bring some more spiritual view to these uh, matters, and uh, I think it's, it's very helpful to us. Thank you. Thank you for <clears throat> thank you for other readings tonight. Uh, Mrs. Mary Baker Eddy worked uh, so with so much dedication and love to uh, improve the efficacy of Christian Science and uh, then to um, um, establish the Church of Christian Science as a gift to the world. I am grateful for uh, this. Um, um, about a couple of weeks ago, I had a situation in which I um, hit my left knee, and I didn't give it much importance, but then later that day, uh, it was uh, a section there that was um, uh, turning black, and uh, although there was not much pain, um, I should have been concerned. Uh, but I just uh, turned to God and prayed and knew that my identity is um, as a spiritual idea of God, and as such, nothing can damage me. Uh, as days passed, um, the other sections lower than the knee uh, were um, showing signs of... Uh, turning uh, with black and blues, and uh, again, I could have um, panicked and ran to the emergency room and so on, but I didn't. I just continued praying and uh, knowing that God is uh, the only creator and God doesn't create or cause accidents. And the situation has almost disappeared. Uh, the, there is almost no evidence today that uh, there was any uh, any abnormal uh, uh, situation with the leg, and uh, I feel great. And um, this is just one minor example of the efficacy of Christian science. And I am so grateful to Mrs. Eddy and to Christian science and to all churches like this one, which um, um, uh, establish and um, open themselves up for testimonies uh, to tell the, the efficacy of Christian science. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all for your testimonies, your presence, and your prayers during the service. Let's conclude by singing hymn number 111.
High in the heavens, eternal God, thy goodness in full glory shines. Thy truth shall break through every cloud that veils and darkens thy designs. Hymn number 111. <laughs> 